First, let's review Drash's features. The major component of the Drash is a frame with two pre-attached covers. The frame consists of an arrangement of various sized Titanite struts. Struts are connected as pairs and attach at the hubs. These hubs enable the struts to move freely. The unique frame design allows for quick setup and takedown. Both the interior liner and exterior cover are made from specially coated polyester and nylon fabrics. All fabrics are fire retardant, mildew resistant, and water repellent. They have abrasion resistance, blackout capability, and are UV resistant. To begin the setup procedure, first clear enough space to erect the shelter. Then, open the transport bag and remove the field repair kit, push poles, and cinched shelter. Unwrap the ground cover and floor. The ground cover has coated steel wire staking loops around the edges. Also, identify the floor and set it aside. Next, place the ground cover on site and stake it down. Remember, the stakes must be flush to the ground. Then, place the drash on the center of the ground cover with the exterior side facing up and white side facing down and orient the long side of the drash with the long side of the ground cover. Proper alignment will minimize repositioning the shelter later. Remove the shelter cinch straps and return them along with the repair kit and push poles into the transport bag for safekeeping. Next, locate the outermost hubs, which feature the steel wire looped keepers. These outermost hubs, also known as lifting hubs, along with the top of the struts, are the only points from where the drash should be lifted. Be careful not to grab the middle of the struts. Additionally, make sure that the wind lines are not snagged on any of the hubs. Snags could prevent the drash from spreading. To spread the drash, first position one team member at each narrow end wall. Center one person on each of the longer sides. To ensure a proper load distribution for the larger drash models, 4, 5, and 6, position two people per long wall at each hub point next to the end of the wall. Before proceeding, the team leader must be sure everyone is alert and ready. On the team leader's command of ready to lift, lift. Each team member will lift the drash off the ground, take two short steps backward, and gently place the drash down. The drash must be lifted off the ground and do not step on the fabric liner. If there is any resistance or other complication felt by any team member during this move, immediately yell, stop. Identify the problem and correct it. On your leader's command, continue to lift the drash at the highest point of the strut. Step backward and spread. At maximum spread, the shelter will resist further expansion and the center of the exterior cover will rise slightly and appear to inflate or puff. To raise the shelter to its final height, team members will need to locate the proper push points. Each of those hubs will be located near the doorway and marked with a red arrow or flag. Never push on a hub without a red flag. Place one hand under the push point hub and hold the push pole in the other hand. On the team leader's command, each member should simultaneously lift at the push point. Next, quickly place each push pole directly underneath the looped keeper with the red flag, keeping the push pole straight. The drash should now be stable and resting on four push poles that are in a vertical position. For S series, model four, five, and six, and for all XB shelters, Team members at the doorway points should alternately move their poles to the next hub inwards. It will be tagged with a red flag. All personnel should position their poles exactly as before. Before making the final push, the team should leave their poles in place while they inspect the doors, making sure that they aren't caught on any hubs or between the struts. All team members should return to their push poles and be in the ready position. Upon the team leader's command, ready to lift, lift. The team should lift the shelter together until the sidewalls come to a vertical position and the drash is self-supporting.
Before initiating the takedown procedure, first remove all equipment and accessories from inside the shelter. Then begin to detach the floor by unfastening all of the Velcro and green hook connections. Remove the floor clear of the shelter striking area and fold it into quarters lengthwise. Attach the interior skirts to the tabs along the walls. Then close all of the shelter's windows. Completely tie back all doorways. The next step will be to remove shelter and wind line stakes and rewind the wind lines. Position one team member at each doorway. Beginning with the long sides, each team member should grip the interior and exterior doorway hubs with two hands. On command, while maintaining visual contact, lift the wall slightly off the ground in unison. Place your foot against the interior hub at the doorway and slide the bottom of the shelter out about six to eight inches. The exterior hubs should now be slightly off the ground. Repeat this procedure for the end walls. Once that is done, all walls should be resting on the interior hubs. Position one team member at each end wall of the drash and center one more at either end of the longer sides. For models four, five, and six, position two personnel per long wall as indicated by the stenciling on the exterior skirt. The team leader should walk around the shelter to see that each team member is well positioned to easily grasp the exterior lifting hub and is ready to execute on command. For your own safety, do not put your fingers into the loops of the looped keepers. Upon the command, ready to strike, the team leader will begin to count to three. On the count of three, the team will lift the hubs up and out in one swift motion. The frame walls will then release and fall inward. On command, the team will lift the drash off the ground in unison and walk toward the center. Be careful not to trip on the fabric that may gather at your feet. Before completing the compression, push the exterior cover between the struts so that all keepers are exposed. Make sure all wind lines are not tangled within the frame or fabric. If a wind line is caught, open the shelter up enough to free it. When clear, place the wind lines on top of the drash. Then complete compacting the bundle. Invert the drash so that the white side is up. Open the shelter slightly and carefully push the interior liner between the struts so that all keepers are exposed. Then, secure one of the cinch straps around the top section of the collapsed shelter approximately one and one-half feet down from the top interior hubs. Invert the drash again so that the exterior cover is now facing up. Compress and secure the shelter with a second cinch belt approximately one and one-half feet from the exterior keepers. Next, lay the drash on its side and lift it off the ground by either the cinch strap or by the hubs closest to the ground. Remember, lift with your legs, not your back. Fold into quarters lengthwise and lay the folded floor on top. Place the drash on its side at the end of the folded ground cover and floor. It will require three team members to wrap the covers around the drash. The first two should roll the shelter and the third should tuck in the covers during the wrapping. This will help keep the wrap tight and further compress the bundle. When complete, stand the drash with the white side up, holding the ground cover close to the shelter. Secure the shelter with the third cinch belt in the center. Then, empty the transport bag and place it over the shelter, making sure to align the carrying straps on the outside of the bag with the end walls. This will allow the instruction panels to fall against the wide section when slipped over the drash. Next, push the shelter over with the instruction panel down. Return push poles, the repair kit, and other accessories to the transport bag. Fasten the two belts on the transport bag. Pull the rope to close the end of the bag and secure it with a knot. The drash is now bagged and ready for its next deployment.